<laughs> so this is a tiny little project. So we switch to a less controversial topic now. It should be f only fun. No, uh, nothing really should break. It's we were just annoyed by what Grub tries to be an operating system. So we all use EFI laptops now, and we thought we would need something else than a engine that runs scripts, which runs scripts that were created by a script to find out what kernel to boot. Pardon? Well, I mean, that's, a, that's not for, and no end, user, no end user will see that. But we all know the GR and stop with the grub boot and all this stuff. And none of the stuff is needed for EFI because, uh, like, EFI was created to, uh, to uh, pre give Windows something like what we have with an initRD. And grub tries to be between EFI and an initRD to run an operating system, which is kind of pointless. So we wrote something and called it Gummy Boot which is a tiny tool, it's about a thousand lines of code. It's a simple program that runs in EFI as an EFI program. You can think of EFI as an MS-DOS environment, which is just better. So it's a simple program, you start it, it reads in simple configuration files, one file for everything you want to boot, and uh, you want to show in the menu, and it draws the menu, press enter, or it's selected automatically, and then uh, you boot that kernel. There's also a tiny, so, Tiny command line editor. Oh, you cannot see that. <laughs> Is that? So, yeah, so this is all. You press E in it, and you press it, you see that, and you can edit that. That's basically all. What it also does, it detects automatically a macOS installation and a Windows installation, and it draw, shows that in the menu, so there's nothing to configure. If you install Windows, it shows up automatically in the boot menu. If you install macOS, which you probably had when you bought the box, it works, it works on every Mac, so you can just drop in the binary of the Gummy Boot binary, and it the Mac t finds it and shows it menu. What else should we do? Yeah, it's an Emacs and VI key bindings for Leonard. <laughs> the help screen, help was H. Where is it? Oh, it's a German keyboard. <laughs> so it's really simple. And oh, the performance data. So what it does, what no bootloader currently does, is it collects the data, the performance data of the, uh, of the boot, so it stores that in EFI variables, so systemd can read it from there. But it's a very generic version, so we allocated a UUID for EF, EFI and export like simple names, they all start with loader, timing, whatever, and so it's all documented on the wiki, the link is on the, on the screen to the left, and uh, every bootloader could implement these variables just by exporting them to EFI, and systemd would pick up these values. How many files? Um, it, it's EFI, so it only supports FAT. There is no file system driver. You can add file system drivers to EFI, and it could find something in it, but we only use the FAT driver. So we install the kernel and the FAT driver. So slash boot on our system is usually the FAT partition of the, of the host which is the simplest way you can do, but there is no limit. So you can install an EFI driver for ButterFS or extended, and you could read the configuration from there and the kernels from there. But it's not what we support now because we don't use it, but it's, EFI provides you with that. Pardon? A FAT partition is mandated by EFI, so it's in the firmware. I could get up. You require the EFI and the application, the EFS, the EFI system that you need to read under the process you want to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So this is the, these are the file snippets living in the ESP, the FE system partition, and every kernel the distribution installs just creates one of these file snippets, and these are read by the bootloader and shown, shown as a menu. And this is the, the layout of the kernels and the init IDs on the EFI partition. That's what we use today, and that's what takes the 18 milliseconds in the boot chart. <coughs> so, should we move over to the bootloader specification? Or is it something else? No, I mean, is, is there something else for Gummy Boot? Yeah. Sorry, can we go? Okay, so. Nah, LoadoConf is not interesting. So, the thing is, the uh, bootloader snippets uh, live in a directory called like just loader, and followed by by the. Uh, Loader entries, it's a subdirectory in there, and all these snippets are supposed to be read by all bootloaders who are out there. So currently it's only Gummy Boot doing that, and the S390 guys ported their bootloader, <laughs> booted their bootloader to this thing. Leonard wrote a patch for Grub2 to read these snippets too, but it's not active now, so we didn't merge it, and it's in Fedora, but it doesn't work, because the path has been changed to something that can't work. But the end goal is that you, we all have only these bootloader snippets in, created by the distributions when they install the kernel and all the bootloaders, whatever it is, it's ARM or whatever, can read these things and you can exchange bootloaders without touching the configurations. And this is why we created a bootloader specification. It's a tiny document specifying something of it. It overlaps a bit with the Gummy Boot stuff. Gummy Boot exports more like the performance data, which is not part of the bootloader specification, but they can just pick it up if they want to, but it's nothing that is necessary for anything. So something that the bootloader specification does that, I mean, we spoke a bit about bootloader spec actually last year or something, but something that the bootloader spec does that, that uh, is not done traditionally is that Actually, um, because, it's not um, so, um, because traditionally, if you had multiple um, Linuxes installed locally, um, then you would have a couple of different slash boot partitions. And, uh, and then the bootloaders would always override it themselves in the MBR, and you would have trouble finding the other stuff, and then the, the other um, Linuxes, and then there were gigantic scripts, which then, when they installed the bootloader, they tried to find, again, the all other installations, but then if you updated the bootloader from another Linux installation, they would overwrite things again, so everything was horrible. So um, the idea of the bootloader spec that is actually implemented by Gummiboot then as well is the idea that everybody, all the Linux distributions that are on the local system can actually use a shame, shared um, um, boot partition for that, so the, the EFI system partition, and can just drop in their stuff. Right, they drop in a couple of files, register them and sell them in the menu, and if they want to get out, removed from the menu again, um, they just remove them again. And that's like the really, really simple and thing. Ideally, so you, we would just, you could point the EFI firmware to either Gummy Boot or Grub2 and everything would work the same way. It's just a lot slower with Grub, but it would boot the same thing. And just play the same way. Yeah. I mean, well, it's Grub. <laughs> so. The... Uh, Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah, just curious. Um, so something that's nice about Gummy Boot as well is that we 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 actually have a little bit of a cheaper version of Gummy Boot, so which makes it relatively safe to install it. Um, like because it does a couple of verification checks, you basically just have to pass a EFI partition to it, and then it will install everything. So it does a couple of verification steps so that it will actually place things at the right spot, and will verify that it's actually EFI. And will that actually also register in the, in, the, in the firmware so that the, the, the logic in the firmware is not needed where it looks for, for the partition to boot, which has the benefit that the file can boot a little bit faster because it already knows what it looks for. And as soon as that has shown up, it can boot from it instead of having to wait until everything has shown up and then you know, trying to figure out what of these options it should boot from. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice tool. It's like part of the Gummy Boot um, towel. Uh, Gummy Boot is actually a package for Fedora, so you can. It is. Yeah. And then use the Gummy Boot binary to install it. So 
So the ultimate goal with the bootloader specification is that bootloaders and configuration of bootloaders are separated entirely from each other. So the configuration is owned by the machine living in, for EFI, living in the EFI partition, but you can exchange bootloaders and the bootloader configuration would not be part of the bootloader. So it's just reading the same files. Everything should read the same files, and you can exchange things. And you can also just copy the stuff to a different machine, just bit by copying the snippers over or whatever. But it's, it's really different from what we do today, because every bootloader chair creates its own machinery of writing the config out. And we want to rip, out, rip it out of the bootloader so they don't touch it. So the GUMI boot binary and the installer has no idea about the configurations on the disk. It will never touch them. And if you install kernels, only one of the snippet files will come and go away. And you will never touch the global configuration of the bootloader. So it's really interesting. Um, the interesting that we try to follow the system with all the stuff that we do in systemd is that these things become robust, right? So that we never have to rewrite configuration files that might be in a bad state, that we never have to drop or remove configuration, overwrite configuration of, of somebody, some other component of the system. And that basically we have to store everything only once instead of uh, multiple times, which might get out of sync. So um, this basically means that in then in GUMI boot you just drop in your 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 drop in files, and then GUMI boot will pick them up. That GUMI boot will automatically discover Windows and Apple. Um, then uh, um, that uh, Draco is capable of automatically finding the root disk, and that then uh, system when it's running is capable yeah. of automatically finding the home directory. Um, if you put all of this together, a lot of the, of the um, like chances where the boot can go wrong just go away because yeah, everybody just looks on what's there and uses that. And um, it becomes movable. You can change. You can copy stuff from one machine to the other in a way, which is kind of sane. So if you touch, if you're close to any bootloader or know somebody who owns a bootloader or maintains one, please make them consider looking at these files. I mean, they could just read them on top of the menu they already have. It's really nothing that should break anything. Friend? I, I don't know about that. I guess, yeah. I mean, it's very simple. It's just a file with a few keys in it. I mean, the, the file format is, uh, um, is, is, is like, it takes up what grub uh, one did right, and in having a very, very simple configuration file, and then they fucked it all up with grub two. But uh, the, the idea was basically uh, to not invent something new, but like use the simple most thing that already existed, and that is a grub one stuff. And this is so simple to parse that you can actually do it in a bootloader trivially. You could even do it in assembler if you, if you, if you like to, because it's, it's like the trivial, the most trivial possible program. And there is a thing coming with systemd, which is called kernel install, which creates these snippets from the RPM, and we use it in Fedora. So the, if you install a Fedora kernel and have that enabled, and you don't have installed Grubby, which is the stuff we currently use no, for. You can uh, have it installed. You oh, just you have okay. to have the bootloader directory. OK, so you create a directory in the ESP, and it will create these snippets. So every kernel that comes and goes will maintain the stuff in the partition there. Anything else? What's that about the last topic? Yeah, that's what you, if you want to. Yeah, I'll demo some uh, 